A hype beast, by definition, is a person who follows a trend to be cool or in style. A person who wears what is hyped up. But I think it's arbitrary, and what's hyped up changes all the time. And hype beasts in 2020 are definitely a lot different from hype beasts back in 2012. And it's been eight years. What the hell? It's been eight years? And it's about damn time we get a refresh on what it is to be a hype beast in the present. And who knows? You know, you might be one yourself and you don't even know. <laughs> this video is kind of like, like when you're kind of sick, right? And then you look up your symptoms on WebMD because you're kind of just like trying to figure out what's going on. Turns out you're actually dying and you have cancer instead. And yeah, I think this uh, video is kind of like that. And so, yeah, I'm just going to run it in this self-diagnosis test interrogation Facebook quiz BuzzFeed uh, style thing because it's more fun that way. So if this comes off condescending, it's because it is. So yeah, I got five symptoms here that you can check for if you want to know if you or a loved one is a hype beast, whether your symptoms be benign or malignant, you know, I feel like we all got to know. Also, if you live in Hawaii, big news, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm visiting home because I miss my parents. Oh yeah, I, get, I have parents, guys. And I'm hosting an event with Untied Hawaii where we can all hang out and talk about memes. It's gonna be, so yeah, just wait till the end of the video. I'll give more details then. Starting off with the first uh, symptom, we got irrational interest. If you or a loved one has shown signs of being unnecessarily turned on by miscellaneous branded objects, he or she might show signs of being a high beast. These things can consist of the more obvious and wild things like Supreme Oreo or Supreme Ziploc bag, which is, they're both, kind of items like these are obviously irrational for the price and concept kind of and you're more than likely to hear excuses such as but uh it's supreme <laughs> well like <laughs> off-white is my favorite brand it's an investment or other wild sentences that kind of all just translate to one lying to themselves like the new travis scott dunk that just came out had a special release on travis's website and the pairs on there had a special box it had this paisley cool. And now on the resale market, the pairs with the special box are going for almost double. Like, sure, it's, you know, special edition, super limited thing that really marked a moment in the culture. You know, there were rare Yu-Gi-Oh cards too. That Those were expensive. Rational sentiment, but irrational pricing. And having a rational interest with an irrational price is almost the same. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be something like a bare brick with a resale price equivalent to a 98 Honda or expensive red cookie, having irrational interest without any personal reason besides hype and social praise is a telltale sign that you or a loved one might be a hype beast. So just paying a lot for stupid crap is what I'm... God, I could have just like, I didn't even have to do that whole... I could have just said that. Coming up next on the diagnosis, this one goes hand in hand with the first symptom and that's seeing clothes as currency. A common trait between hype beasts is seeing pieces by their dollar value as opposed to their artistic value and or what it means to oneself. I mean, nothing doesn't have to be that deep, but the main symptom to look for is when someone only finds interest in something based on how high it's rated on StockX.com. And myself, as someone who doesn't do this, but I do have a friend who's an expert in identifying the dollar value in things, and that's my boy, Untied Hawaii. Bryson, hey, so uh, I'm doing a, I'm doing my community service, and uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help the sick. What's your opinion on hype beasts viewing clothes as currency? and stuff we're all about trying to find good value and selling these shoes and stuff and then that way we can actually make money on it there's like a demand and supply for it so yeah it's new age it makes a lot of sense and there's some things you can keep and there's stuff you can sell i like it wow actually anything else you want to say to the uh to the people Thank you. But yes, of course, there's dollar value in clothes and you got to buy them with money at the end of the day. And we all know when someone's wearing some heat. We all do. That's the whole point of high school and college. But it's one thing to be aware and it's one thing to seek things solely because of how much they're worth on the resale market. You know, whether you be a reseller or a convicted flex offender, Basing what something means to you in accordance to its dollar value is a sign that you or a loved one might be a hype beast. In other words, 
give me money. All right, so the next thing on the diagnosis, we got raffles and giveaways. These have been rampant all over YouTube and Instagram, and I guess it's kind of cool. It's a cool way to spark interest in the community and engage with your audience, but I also think it's a good way to spot hype beasts. We all know those giveaways, right? Where it's like, tag five friends, follow me, follow everyone I'm following. You gotta rap five songs, you gotta do the five fingers of death, and you gotta run a marathon uphill in the snow with toe shoes for a chance to win the new Travis Scott socks. Like, first of all, what a ridiculous assumption to say that I have five friends. What the hell is that? But even if you like don't necessarily participate in that, you ever just get tagged in one of these by like a friend of yours? You know, you're like, you're just going about your day and then whoop, you just get tagged with like Charlemagne the God and Drake in this giveaway. Because you know damn, no one has five friends, but this has definitely happened to a lot of people. So then when you get tagged in these, kind of go track your friend down who tagged you and just think about this. Isn't he or she your hype beast friend? Got him exposed. But also I don't do enough giveaways or raffles to hold this point alone. So I have my good friends, Jacob and Patrick Starr. Jacob, how you doing? Let me just- uh, I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm, uh, <laughs> so you do these, uh, you do these raffles, right? Where you kind of just raffle off cool stuff. Yes, extremely cool stuff. Easy. So what is your opinion on how raffles affect the community and, and how they play into hype beast culture? Raffles are obviously a way to obtain a product that you normally could not afford, right? right. A lot of the products are uh, rare or extremely sought after. It's grown a lot. It started off, I think, in like hype beast culture and then I mean, we see it in like vintage and other communities now. But really, it's just like anything else. It's kind of like McDonald's, right? Like, there we go. Like, it's like a risk. All right. Well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a great point, honestly. Yeah, thank you for having that because I don't do raffles and it's uh, it's great having you on the, on the research team. Do you have anything else to say to the people? Um, I just want to say, uh, Christian, I love you. And, um, all right. Thanks, man. McDonald's. It's a risk, you know? So if you or a loved one find yourself entering raffles and tagging your friends on Instagram to be a part of giveaways, you or that loved one might be a hype beast. Coming up next, we got a visual symptom. That's usually a telltale sign that you or a loved oh, God. And that's branding. So branding, what do you mean by this? You mean like, like what they do with cows? Yes. No. Kind of? I mean, it's in the same vein, though. I, this is like when someone really wants to let you know that he, this guy might be into fashion. I don't know. He might be into fashion. Who knows? But this is a very obvious one that a lot of people point out, so there's no point in beating a dead horse. So I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a second here. Billie Eilish. I love Billie Eilish. Love her music. Sim! She loves to wear flashy logos and jarring pieces, sometimes all over, like, her whole body. But does this make her a hype beast? No, not necessarily. Lil Uzi Vert, notorious for his loud, expressive fits, letting you know what's going on. Like, look at this. This fits, cr he must be proud of this fit. He must be proud of this fit. He must be proud of. Stop. Does this make him a hype beast? No. So these two, right? Not high beast. But see, let's say uh, Jimmy, on the other hand. I don't know where that name came from. <laughs> Rocking so much off-white, it's just yellow. Is Jimmy a high beast? Probably. So what's the difference here? Why are these guys not high beast and Jimmy <laughs> is? Well, think of it this way. A high beast, in terms of branding at least, is reaching. And when I say reaching, I mean it's like they're definitely trying way too hard. And when you see all this heavy branding on other people that quote, aren't hype beasts, it's because it's done in an artistic matter. It's a totally different context. And I can't tell you exactly what the line is, but there's a difference here. There's a big difference. So if you can feel yourself or a loved one reaching hard, you or a loved one might be a hype beast or a simp. Lastly, we got the final and most aware symptom, leaning into it. So being a hype beast over the years has gone from being cool to bad to, I don't, e I, don't e I don't even know where we're at now. And in the grand scheme of things, wherever the term may land now, I think it's best you just lean into it and own it. But regardless, leaning into it doesn't excuse you from the title. And not that being a hype beast means any good or bad necessarily. I feel like that's kind of just up for interpretation and context. Also, it's not that deep, you know, but I digress. In 2020, I tend to see more and more people just owning it and good, good on them, you know, hats off to you. And it's what I've been saying, you know, if you're gonna be a hype beast, you might as well own it. It's like, why not? 
But to top it off, I got the king of owning it, my friend Caius Omar, to confirm the point. Caius. Yo, what up? How you been? So I'm doing a uh, community service. So you're kind of the king of like owning it as in being yeah. a high beast. What's your opinion on just like leaning into it nowadays, especially in, in 2020? Uh, well, I kind of built my whole brand about being the high beast, the biggest high beast on YouTube. I kind of like took it from being such a negative way to look at people to trying to be a positive with it. A high beast is someone who has all the newest and hottest stuff and always just hops on whatever trend is popping, right? And right. it just feels like I like those things. I like having the newest stuff. I like being the first one with a pair of sneakers. So I, I just wanted to be proud of it being it. So I feel like it's not a bad thing. And if you call someone that in 2020, it's not offensive as it was four or five years ago. You know what I mean? So it's more of like a troll joke type of thing now. Oh, for sure. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. But thank you for uh, putting the input on it. You know, we're just trying to keep the hype beast vibes alive. So we'll see. <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. And okay, so those are the symptoms with my cited sources, as you can see. Also, if you live in Hawaii, I'm hosting an event at Bait Hawaii downtown with my good friend Bryson from Untied Hawaii. Whole lot of Hawaii stuff going on. But I've been in New York since like 2017, so it's been a minute since I've been home. But it's going to be on Sunday, March 8th from 12 to 3 p.m. at the Bait Store downtown Honolulu. So just pull up, hang out. There's there's nothing to lose here except for maybe your time. But, I, you know, I don't know. This is the first event I've ever hosted. So come share the anxiety with me and Bryson. I'm kind of just doing this for fun. I'd like to think of it more of a hangout in my hometown with some friends since I'm back home because I miss my parents. So let's all just have fun. You know, follow my Instagram at ChristianVY for more Chungus and pull up to the hangout, Hawaii. Thank you. Uh, bye.